A sower went out to sow other seed fell onto the good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. Our second gospel reading is from Mark 5, 1 through 20. They came to the other side of the lake, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he stepped out of the boat, immediately a man leapt out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain. For he'd often been restrained with shackles and chains. But the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him. And he shouted at the top of his voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you, by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside a giant herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine, let's enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirit came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbered about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank and into the lake and were drowned in the lake. The swine herds ran off and told it to the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind. The very man who had had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by the demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. this parable. 
the parables of the kingdom. The parables that share what the kingdom looks like, what a kingdom built on God's love is about. This is the story that immediately follows them. Okay? So that means it's connected, right? Because otherwise they would have put it somewhere else in telling the gospel message. So they want you to read this story in connection with what came before it. And what came before it are the parables of the kingdom. So what happens in this story? In this story, there is a man who didn't fit. So in the language of the Gospels, he's a demoniac who's possessed by many demons, not just one. In my language, I would probably talk about evil. That Jesus encountered evil when he was walking through that cemetery. Other people talk about it as mental health. That this man struggled with a mental illness. And they didn't have the language for it back then. However you want to talk about it, because of what the man was going through. The people around him made him live in the cemetery, in the tombs, out by himself because they couldn't handle him. And when Jesus comes up to him, the evil inside him recognizes Jesus and asks him not to hurt him. Okay? The evil recognizes Jesus and asks him not to hurt him. And Jesus has a conversation, talks with the man, talks through what is going on, and frees the man from the evil. He has mercy upon the evil he is speaking with. And then we have the whole pig incident, which the vegetarian in me just goes, Whoa! <laughs> But in it, those who were taking care of the pig run and tell everybody what had happened. And everybody flocks out to see what has happened, what has occurred, and tell Jesus that it's nice and all that you're a faith healer, but really, really, could you just leave our neighborhood? Why don't you go to the next town over? We kind of had enough of you. We're for and the man, who now for the first time in his life is experiencing quiet, is experiencing wholeness within his being, who is fully himself in a new way that he has never had before, asks Jesus if he can go with him. And Jesus at this point says, you need to stay here. I want you to tell others what God has done for you. I want you to share how you have experienced the mercy of God. And then it says, he goes all over the Decapolis, the ten city area on the other side of the lake across from Israel, and spreads the word. The good soil, right? Right? He experienced the mercy of God, and he can't help but share it, not just in his community, but in the ten surrounding communities around him. The good soil, someone who has experienced what God has done for them, has experienced the mercy and grace of God, and can't help but share that with everyone he encounters the good soil. And just so you know how good that soil is, he's a stranger, right? A foreigner. Someone not of Jesus' community, tribe, religion, faith, country. He is on the other side of the lake, which is a boundary marker in the Gospels that says you've entered foreign territory. 
Jesus has healed someone who is a stranger, an outsider, a foreigner. And you know how well he did? We have a whole bunch of stories that follow this, right? Including stories where the word about Jesus expands and spreads. But in the next section, what we have is a series of stories about Jesus. They cross back over to their side of the lake, to their country, their tribe, their faith, their people. And on that side of the lake, Jesus heals and teaches and feeds people. And while all this is happening, good soil man is in the Decapolis, right, Sharon? And Jesus starts having encounters with the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious folk who don't get him. Not all the scribes, not all the Pharisees, but the ones who find what he is doing to be different and unacceptable from what they want to practice. And they start questioning him, and he has a big dialogue with them in this section about what makes a person clean or unclean, what makes a person welcome and wanted and accepted and part of the community, what makes a person whole and healed. And then he crosses the boundary again, goes across the water to the other side and heals. First he heals the daughter of a woman and then he heals a man who is deaf and tongue-tied, whose friends have heard the stories, encountered the good soil man, right, telling what has been done, encountered him. And so his friends bring the deaf and tongue-tied man to Jesus. And Jesus spits in his hands and pokes in his ears and cries a word in his soul to be opened and then tells his friends who are amazed that this has happened, that the man can now hear and speak clearly, not to tell anyone. So what does the man's friends do? They are the good soil and they share the word far and wide about what Jesus has done. They share the message as far as it will go. And then Jesus, on the other side of the lake, with the foreigners, with the undesirable, with the people not of his tribe, with the people outside of his boundary, feeds them. Feeds thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And then it gets to this passage that says, When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret, Another word for the Gerasene demon, Maniac. And moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region, bringing to him the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was and wherever he went into the villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The good soil. That when you allow God to work on your life, when you allow God in, you begin to change and transform, and you're not perfect because you're going to have bad soil days, and bad soil weeks, and bad soil months, and bad soil years. But when you allow God in, things change. Maybe it's your perception that changes. Maybe it's your belief in yourself that changes. But when you experience that change, when you experience that presence of God, and you know that God has worked on your life to bring health and healing and wholeness to your soul, to that little spark of the divine inside you, when you have experienced that, you can't help but 
share what God has done, to share about the mercy of God. That's what the good soil is. That something that has been seen as evil, even evil, experiences the grace and mercy of God and can be transformed, can be transformed and changed and become good soil. Listen. A sower went out to sow and he sowed the seed on the good soil and it yielded 30, 60, and 100 fold. Amen. Jesus done for you. God, we know the story is a man full of evil, freed of his demons, a mentally ill person brought to health, then tells everyone what Jesus has done. A man ill and illness people can see. He asked to be clean, to be made whole, to be healed. He shared what Jesus had done, how Jesus had been moved by compassion. A man who couldn't hear or speak, friends asked Jesus to help. His ears are open, his tongue is free, and he's told not to share. But he now can hear, and he must speak. A man cries for mercy, he wants mercy, he wants to see, and Jesus brings him sight, he follows Jesus on the way. God, have mercy on us, where there is evil. And this week we have seen so much evil. We have learned how our Asian American sisters and brothers, fellow beloved people of God, have been treated by us in this country for months and years. God have mercy on us where there is evil, where there is illness, where there is stigma, where we can't see each other where people can't hear each other, where words are not understood, where your word is misinterpreted. God, have mercy on us. God, we ask you help us to change our soil so that we may experience what it means to be good soil, to be receptive to the word and willing to share your word extravagantly. God, we stop and pray for our families and friends those who are ill, those who have lost their jobs, those who are grieving, those who are lost, alone, and lonely, those who are hungry, those who are in need of a home, and those who are full of fear. God, we pray for our friends and family. And God, we ask your mercy to be upon us as we stop and pray the prayer that you taught us, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I want to thank Nanette for coming today. Thank you. Your music is beautiful and we're blessed to have you here. So this, um, we're doing our special mission offering a little early this month um, because our special mission for the whole time of Lent has been to, to fill up dinners for those in the Hinkley Area Food Pantry. And we're doing a wonderful job, and I know people brought more stuff today. So thank you. This morning, if you have extra dollars, um, we'll use it to buy the hams to put in with the dinner. So thank you for doing all that you have done to share with the people in our community who could use an Easter meal. Let us pray. God, we ask you to bless the food and the money that you may use it to grow, that you may use it and us to grow and be healthy and create your kingdom of love here on earth. Amen.
I have nobody told you today that I love you. Remember that God loves you and always will. That Jesus loves you and always will. That I love you and always will. May your soil be turned. May it be tilled. May it be enriched that you may become the good soil and share the word far and wide. Amen. <laughs>